Hello guys, in this video I'm going to take you through the different elements of structured data. First of all, we are going to look at the data sources. Uh, data comes from different um, sources, from different places which we are going to look at and there are very many. Uh, the first one is sensor measurements. Uh, sensor measurements include, uh, I'll give you an example of uh, uh, when you're dealing in telematics, car tracking, and other uh, things like um, electronic components, tracking. Um, uh, these sensors capture information like uh, on mileage of a car, on, uh, on uh, fuel usage of a car, and so on. So that's uh, one part of a uh, uh, data source. There's also events, um, there's text. Uh, for example, data that, that comes from Twitter, from Facebook, in form of texts and so on. Uh, there's also images, uh, data you take using, uh, you get using um, cameras, satellites. Uh, there's also videos. This data you get uh, by shooting videos of different things. Um, a table of rows and columns is a common structured data format. For example, I would give you an example of Excel that you know most is uh, or a data frame in uh, in Python or uh, R. It would be a, a, a common structured data format. Um, uh, let's look at the basic types of structured data. The first uh, type is numeric data. This is data that is basically in form of numbers, uh, continuous data, and disc discrete data. Uh, continuous data in most cases uh, includes um, uh, data that is captured in between as, uh, uh, in between intervals. Uh, I would give you an example of um, uh, temperature. In that case, would be continuous. Um, then discrete data in this case would be a count, for example, number of days. I would consider it as a discrete data. Uh, then there is categorical data as uh, another type of data of structured data, and categorical can be in different formats. This can be binary in form of zeros and ones, uh, or ones and zeros. There is numerical, which doesn't take on a, a, a given order. Then there is ordinal, which takes on a given order. Yes. Um, uh, data types help to determine the type of visual displays, data analysis, or statistical model. For example, if you have a categorical data, you wouldn't uh, employ a, a histogram to visualize it. Uh, you would rather uh, employ uh, maybe a bar graph or uh, a pie chart and so on. Uh, then when it comes to statistical model, uh, uh, the data type would determine so much which statistical model you're going to use for your analysis. For example, uh, uh, continuous data uh, in form of an outcome would call for a uh, 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 um, a linear regression model. Uh, let's look at the key terms for data types. There is numeric data as we have just seen, which is expressed on a numeric scale. Uh, it can be continuous, taking uh, any value in, uh, in an interval. It can be discrete, which takes on an integer, such as counts. Uh, then data can be categorical, which is a specific set of values. For example, when I say male or female, that is categorical. It can be binary, yes or no, male or female. It can be ordinal. Uh, it can be uh, nominal. Oh, yeah. Then we have um, a, a terminology for, for rectangular data which I talked uh, about earlier. A rectangular data object is a typical frame of reference for an analysis uh, in data science. Uh, I would look at rectangular data in form of an Excel format or a data frame in Python R. So uh, rectangular data is the general term for a two-dimensional matrix with rows indicating records. 
and the columns indicating variables. Yeah, unstructured data must be processed and manipulated so that it can be represented as a set of features in the rectangular data. Yeah, rectangular data, for example, if you have maybe um, a sheet that has students' data uh, and the first column represents uh, maybe there is a student name, then the second column student number, and then uh, the, the third column it has a student max. Then that would be considered as variables. Then in the rows, you would populate the different data in the different columns. Then for unstructured data, it doesn't necessarily have to be in form of a rectangle. So when you're, when you're trying to analyze it, you have to uh, in most cases, you have to transform it to look like a rectangular data frame and then perform some beta analysis. Uh, there are key terms for rectangular data. First of all, we have a data frame. Yeah, this is just like a spreadsheet, like uh, the, the way you would see a spreadsheet in a workbook for Excel. Yeah, this is a basic structure for statistical and machine learning models. Then there is a feature is commonly considered as a column or a variable within a table. Then uh, we have an outcome, which is basically an, a, a, a dependent variable in case you want to come up with a predictive model to predict for something. Maybe you want to predict whether people who, uh, whether it will rain today or not. So it raining or not would become your dependent variable, the column that contains that data. Then we have records which are rows within a table. Each row represents a record. Yeah, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if this video was so helpful.